Tiung An, Eight Friends Plus, student book, published by Vietnam Education Publishing House. Authors, Chan Cowboy Nok, Chan Kim Seon, Chang Gui Un Thuy, Thailand. CD1 Starter Unit Vocabulary Exercise 2 Excuse me? I'm asking people about their morning routines. Have you got a minute? Yes, sure. What are you doing in town this morning? I'm looking for a present for my mum. Do you always go shopping on Saturday mornings? No, I don't. I normally play football, but I'm not playing this morning. Oh, right. What time do you get up in the morning? It depends. My mum usually wakes me up at seven o'clock, before she goes to work. Do you have breakfast? Yes. I have some cereal or toast. Then my sister and I go to school. What time do you start school? I start school at nine. Thanks for your help. Have a good day. Hello. Do you have a minute to answer some questions? I'm asking people about how they spend their evenings. OK. Do you usually go home straight after school? Usually, yes. I finish school at four and I like to do my homework when I get home. Then I can relax in the evening. How do you relax? I see you've got some headphones. Do you listen to music? Yes, I like hip-hop. I also go on my laptop and chat online or watch videos. Do you help at home much after school? Does someone tidy your room and cook your meals? I don't often tidy my room. My mum does it. My dad always cooks dinner and I sometimes help him. And what time do you go to bed? Around 10 o'clock. Sometimes a bit earlier if I'm tired. OK, great. Thanks very much. Starter Unit Language Focus Exercise 4 Break Extra Gift, cold, scholar, history, text, discover, planet. Starter unit, vocabulary and listening. Exercise 1. See. Saw. Eat. At. Go. Went. Ride. Road. Teach. Taught. Be. Were. Hear. Heard. Make. Made. Get. Got. Have. Had. Do. Did. Speak. Spoke. Leave. Left. Give. Gave. Buy. Bought. Starter unit. Vocabulary and listening. Exercises 3 and 4. 1. When did you last wear sports clothes? I bought some new sports clothes on Saturday and I wore them yesterday at the gym. I didn't see you at the sports centre. Don't you usually go there on Monday afternoons? 
two. At what age did you first swim in the sea? I first swam in the sea when I was six. I remember I wasn't scared, but I was nervous. Three. When was the last time that you lost something? I lost my sunglasses in the park last month. I was really annoyed because they were expensive. Four. What was the last thing that you bought? I bought an app for my smartphone last night. Here, let me show you. Five. What did you do last weekend? I went to a concert with my friends to see my favourite singer. She was amazing, but it's no surprise. She started to sing professionally when she was only six. Unit one, vocabulary, exercise two. One, a fad or craze is an activity which becomes very popular for a short time. Which of these crazes came from Japan? B. Pokemon. Two. When a lot of people like and share a photo or video on social media, it gets a lot of. B. Views. Three. Bluetooth speakers are small gadgets that you can play music on. They became popular around A. Nineteen ninety nine. Four. Fans on social media look at their favourite celebrity posts. Which footballer was the first to get a hundred million Facebook followers? A. Cristiano Ronaldo. Five. Which is the best-selling game app of all time? A. Tetris. Six. The Rubik's cube is the best-selling toy in history. Speed cubers are experts with the cube, and the fastest time to solve the puzzle is less than A. Five seconds. Unit One, Vocabulary, Exercise Three. One. Max. Max, are you into sports? Yes, I like a lot of sports. I like football in particular. I'm a big football fan. I support Manchester United. Two. Elizabeth. Are you interested in music, Elizabeth? Yes, I like music. What kind of music do you like? Dance music mainly and hip hop. I like Nicki Minaj and Missy Elliott. They're cool. Three. Mitchell. Mitchell, do you spend much money on clothes? Um. Yeah, I spend quite a lot. I'm really into fashion and I like to buy new things. I'm always reading magazines and looking out for the latest styles. Four. Yana. Do you follow anyone on social media, Yana? Yes, I'm on Twitter and Instagram, and I follow quite a few people. Some are celebrities. Some are people I know. Five. Joe. What kind of games are you into, Joe? And do you spend much time playing them? I'm not crazy about games, to be honest. I've got one or two games on my phone, but that's all. I don't play them much. I'm more into comics and action figures. You know, Batman, X Men, that sort of thing. Unit one, reading, exercise two. Crazy Crazes, an interview with Miley Jones, an expert on the history of crazes. How do crazes start? Well, crazes generally start in the playground when we're young. 
We see someone doing something fun, and obviously we want to join them. What was the strangest craze? Pole sitting, probably. In 1924, Alvin Kelly sat on a pole for 13 hours. Amazingly, it became popular, and people used to watch the best pole sitters. The record was 21 days. How do current crazes differ from past crazes? Things like toys and card collecting used to be popular. Now, crazes often start online when people see and copy funny ideas for photos or videos on social media. Is that how crazes become so popular quickly? Absolutely. Things can quickly become a craze. Before, people didn't used to have smartphones, but now we can post online game scores or photos immediately. What's your favourite craze? Pet rocks. In the 1970s, Gary Dahl started selling a pet rock in a special box with instructions. Did people really used to buy pet rocks? Yes, they did. Apparently, he sold millions of them. No one really knows what the next craze will be. Unit 1. Vocabulary and listening. Exercise 2. Top half. Blouse, hat, jacket, shirt, scarf. Bottom half. Shorts, trainers, skirt, leggings, trousers. Adjectives. Baggy, colourful, indigo, patterned, knee length. Unit 1. Vocabulary and listening. Exercises 4 and 5. Hi, Sam. I thought you were in Sapa. When did you come back? I came back yesterday. I loved the photos you posted. What were you doing in Sapa? We were visiting my dad for a couple of weeks. He's working there for six months. Check out this photo. Wow, those clothes are so strange. Did you make friends with these people? No, I was walking down the path with my sister when we saw them. They saw my Manchester United shirt and they said a few words in English about football. So we started talking to them. What did you talk about? Well, see the boy in the baggy trousers, a long jacket and a black shirt. His name was Jang Ai Po, and he was really into football, so we talked about Vietnamese footballers. While I was talking to him, my sister was learning some Vietnamese words from the girls. The girls were wearing long indigo blouses over knee-length shorts. My sister thought their clothes were really eco-friendly. Unit 1. Speaking. Exercises 1 and 2. Hi, Sammy. Oh, hi, Hugo. Those are cool trousers. Really? I think they're a bit baggy. They're supposed to be like that. I bought a pair like that a few weeks ago, and they're so comfortable. They look really good. Mm, maybe I'll buy them then. That's an interesting shirt you're wearing. <sighs> it's not really my style. But I'm going to a wedding next week, and Mum wants me to wear something smart. What do you think of this one? That's better. Mm, it's expensive, though. <sighs> You're right, it is. But your mum does want you to look smart. Mm, true. Why don't I try it on and then decide? Unit 1. Speaking. Exercise 4. 1. Blue 2. Look 3. Cool 4. Shoes 5. Good 6. Suit Unit 2. Vocabulary. Exercise 2. Hearing Sound 
Tone deafness. Have a good ear. Listen. Sight. Look. Color blindness. See. Watch. Touch. Feel. Hold. Losing sensation. Unit two, vocabulary exercise four. One. Alicia, what are your favourite sounds, Alicia? My favourite sounds. Um, my favourite sounds are the sounds of the countryside. Oh yes, and the sounds of the sea. It's very relaxing. It reminds me of holidays. Two. Emma. Emma, what smells do you really like? Breakfast smells. I love the smell of coffee in the morning, and toast. They're both great morning smells. Three. Will. Will. Are there any smells that you dislike? Um. Yes. Hospital. I was in hospital once, and I hated the smells in there. Oh, and I can't stand the smell of our school canteen. It always smells like old vegetables. Four. Paul. Paul, is there anything that makes you feel happy when you see it? Yes. I've got a photo of my wife and kids in my wallet. I like looking at that and having it close. Five. Zara. Is there anything that you don't like looking at, Zara? Yes, that's easy. I can't stand the sight of blood. It reminds me of the time I fell off my bike and I hurt my leg. Unit two, reading exercise two. Follow your nose. Meet three people whose sense of smell has made a difference to their lives. A. Helen Keller, a famous activist, was deaf and blind herself. With an extraordinary sense of smell, she could identify people's jobs by the odor on their clothes. When a person passes, she said, "I get a scent impression of where he has been." For her, a smell can remind us of another time and place. B. James Bell has worked for a perfume company for over twenty years. He says, "To develop a superior sense of smell, you must train it like a concert pianist." After passing a smell test, James studied perfumery in France. Where he learned to recognize about two thousand eight hundred synthetic and a hundred and forty natural materials. Since then, he has helped to create the world's favorite fragrances. C. Journalist Lucy Mangan has been anosmic since birth, so she can't smell anything, even the fragrances of roses. She has never tried different perfumes in the shop. As seventy-five to ninety-five percent of the food flavor comes from its smell, meals haven't had much flavor. Although she can feel the different textures of lasagna, steak, or fish, they're all quite tasteless. Unit two, vocabulary and listening, exercise one. One, fantastic. Wonderful. Two, interesting. Fascinating. Three, tasty. Delicious. Four, scary. Terrifying. Five, horrible. Disgusting. Six, tired.
Exhausted. Unit 2. Vocabulary and listening. Exercises 2 and 4. 1. No, I haven't. But I've ridden an alpaca. You've ridden an alpaca, Nina? Seriously? When was that? Um, let me think. Yes, I rode the alpaca when I was six years old. Weren't you scared? What are they like to touch? Did it smell really disgusting? They are so soft to touch. It's incredible. And they don't smell bad at all. This was a really friendly alpaca. Friendly? Yes. It was on the farm of my parents' friends. It loved people. Whoa, weird. 2. Um, I did a 100km cycle ride with my dad last week and I was totally exhausted after that. It's the furthest I've ever cycled. Huh, that's amazing, Joe. I think the furthest I've ever cycled was to school when my mum's car wasn't working. So, you've cycled three kilometres, Sam? It was about four kilometres, actually. And I was really tired after that. I could hardly walk. I am not a big fan of cycling, but I like climbing. Have you ever climbed a mountain? Three. I've eaten a few interesting things since we moved to Asia. Here, look at this. Definitely the most unusual food I've ever eaten. It smelled so bad. Well, that looks really weird. What is it? It's called a durian. It's a fruit. Durian? I've never heard of it. I ate some last year at a market in Singapore. You can't take it into buildings or onto trains or buses because it smells so bad. Ugh! Gross! Unit 2. Language Focus. Exercise 6. Have you been anywhere exciting recently? No, not recently. We went to a water park last month, though. Really? Did you enjoy it? Yes, it was awesome. What's the most amazing ride that you've ever tried? It was the roller coaster at Sunworld Banar Hill. Have you tried it? No, I've never been there. Unit 2. Speaking. Exercises 1 and 2. Have you been to Bowl You Over, the new bowling club? Actually, I've never been bowling. I've heard it's a bit boring. You've never been bowling? Seriously? Let's try it next weekend. We can invite Laurie and Jack too. It doesn't sound much fun to me, but we'll see what they say. I'm hungry. Have you had lunch? No, I haven't eaten since breakfast. Let's have lunch together. What do you fancy eating? I don't know. Fish and chips, I suppose. Wait a second. There's a great restaurant really near here. Come on. OK. Here it is. Can't we have fish and chips? Why not try something different? The food here is delicious. I think you'll enjoy it. OK. I'll give it a try. Great. Unit 2. Speaking. Exercise 4. 1. Have you been to bowl you over? 2. You've never been bowling? Seriously? Progress Review 1. Exercise 4. How was your trip to Italy? It was really great. Italy is such a beautiful country. 
Did you spend a lot of time at the beach? A little, but the weather wasn't too good. It was only hot and sunny on the first day. Then it got colder and windy. Sometimes it even rained. What bad luck! It wasn't that terrible. We went sightseeing a lot, but we had to buy some new clothes first. I only took summer dresses, shorts, and short sleeve tops. So what did you get? Luckily, I had my trainers with me, so I didn't need to buy any new shoes. I bought a baggy hoodie, a pair of jeans, and this pattern jacket. It looks nice. I like it. Thanks. I really enjoyed buying clothes in Italian shops. They've got a lot of beautiful smart blouses and skirts. My sister bought a plain white blouse and a tight skirt. She looks like a TV presenter when she puts them on. She promised to lend me the skirt for Sarah's birthday party next week. Great. Do you want to see some photos? Sure. This is my favorite one. We're all standing by the Trevi Fountain in Rome. I can see your dad and mum, but who's the woman in the colourful hat with your mum? <laughs> Are you kidding me? You don't recognise her. It's my sister, Amy. <laughs> She looks so different in the hat, black trousers, and black boots. Did you buy them in Italy too? Only the hat. Check out this next photo. This photo. Progress review one, exercise eleven. Today on Radio Five. We're talking about a birthday party you won't forget. Have you been to a memorable birthday party? Call in and tell us about it. Ah,、oh, we've got the first caller. Hi, I'm Grace. My friend Megan had the most amazing birthday party last year. It was her thirteenth birthday, and she invited us to a spa. It was a nice place. We felt like celebrities. They looked after us all the time. First, the hairdresser did our hair. Then, someone painted our fingernails, and finally, they did our makeup. We looked wonderful. One thing that made me miserable, though, was the food. I was so hungry, but they only served cupcakes. I'm sure they were delicious, but I can't eat anything with eggs in. Oh dear! <laughs> Thank you, Grace. We've got James on the line. Hello, James. Hello. I'm calling to tell you about an awful birthday party I went to. My friend Nathan invited a few friends to an amusement park for his fourteenth birthday. It was a hot day, and there were lots of people. We had to wait in a queue for a long time before we could take a ride. After a few hours, we were exhausted. How long can you stand in the sun and wait? Besides, the rides weren't terrifying at all. They were small, and good for eight-year-olds. Finally, we decided to go to a 3D cinema. It was one of the attractions, but Nathan had to pay extra for the tickets, and it made him really furious. I was more upset about the popcorn. It was disgusting. So much salt. The good thing about the cinema was that we didn't have to wait in a queue once. Thank you, James. What a party! Remember, if you've been. Unit three, vocabulary exercise two. One. The Red Sea is a great place for scuba diving. Which of these is not a sea? C, the Blue Sea. Two. The Grand Canyon is an enormous deep valley. The river which made it is the B, Colorado. Three. In Quang Binh, Vietnam, there is an enormous cave called Sun Dong. 
It holds the world's largest natural cave with a volume of B. 38.5 million cubic meters. 4. Brazil is a fantastic place for adventure. You can visit the spectacular falls at Iguazu or watch the wildlife in the Amazon rainforest, which is bigger than. C. Western Europe. 5. You can surf some of the world's biggest waves in the Atlantic Ocean off the beaches of Ireland and Portugal. Which of these is not an ocean? B. North. 6. In the Gobi March, competitors run 250 kilometres through the dunes of the Gobi Desert. The race is part of a four-race desert challenge, which also includes the A. Sahara, Atacama and the Antarctic. Unit 3. Vocabulary Exercise 3. 1. Max. Which would you prefer, Max? A trip to the mountains or a trip to the sea? Oh, I'd much prefer to go to the sea. I love the water. I do a lot of swimming and surfing. I also like walking along the beach. 2. Alicia. Is there anywhere in the world that you'd like to visit, Alicia? I'd love to visit the Sahara Desert. It's my dream to go on an adventure holiday and ride through the desert on a quad bike or maybe even a camel. 3. Elizabeth Elizabeth, would you rather trek through a desert or a forest? I think both are probably fantastic experiences. Maybe the forest would be more interesting because you'd see more wildlife. Yeah, and you'd be protected by the trees. Unit 3. Reading. Exercise 2. Follow the dream. Hey, do you dream of exotic places? Of trips to distant deserts and mountains? Do you dream of adventure? Well, Liz Clark has been living that dream and I've been following her inspirational blog. After finishing university, Liz learned to sail as one of her old professors offered to lend her his yacht for as long as she wanted it. In October 2005, she set off on her journey. Liz found it hard to leave behind her friends and family, but she's been travelling to many fascinating places for over 15 years. Among other countries, she has stopped off in Mexico, Costa Rica, Panama, and the Galapagos Islands. When she stops somewhere, she surfs, does yoga, and writes her blog. Adverts on Lizzie's blog have been paying for her trip. There are beautiful beaches, crystal clear water, and perfect surf in her photos. But life on the ocean can also be difficult. It feels so great to inspire others to live their dreams, says Liz. I've worked hard, and it hasn't always been easy or fun. She also gets very lonely, but she keeps going. She's looking for some company on the boat to stay with her as she carries on her journey around the world. Liz, I think I'll join you. Does anyone else want some adventure? Unit 3. Language Focus. Exercise 2. Have you been travelling? Yes, I have. Has it been fun? Yes, it has, but it hasn't been easy and the weather has been terrible. Unit 3. Vocabulary and Listening. Exercise 1. A. He's walking through the forest.
She's walking around the forest. B. He's pushing the snowball up the hill. She's skiing down the hill. C. He's jumping over the puddle. He's stepping on a rock. D. He's jumping off the fence. He's going under the garage door. Unit 3 Vocabulary and Listening Exercises 3 and 4 Welcome back to our top 10 countdown of the most amazing sporting achievements ever. We've just seen the videos about them in the first part of our programme and we've learned a bit about these amazingly brave sports people. So, Lauren, what do you think? Well, the skydiving looked really scary and the guy who cycled down mountains, was it Eric Barone? He was amazing. What I didn't understand is why he wanted to break his own cycling record. He's already broken the record. Why do it again? Oh, yes. That was incredible. You know, as well as the speed record, he actually cycled over a volcano. Hmm. Sounds a little dangerous. What's your favourite achievement, Dom? Have you decided yet? No, I still haven't decided. But I've just finished a sailing trip, and I know that the ocean is a difficult, dangerous place. So I really admire Laura Decker. The young girl who sailed around the world? Yes. She started her journey when she was 14, and finished when she was 16. She was the youngest person to do that. Nobody has beaten that record yet, I think. Hey, and um, what about those teenagers who climbed Everest? There was a 13-year-old American boy, and then, a few years later, a 13-year-old girl from India. Amazing achievements. But there are critics who say that all these teenagers were too young for the physical and mental stress. And it actually wasn't them that decided to climb Everest or sail around the world. It was their parents who pushed them to do it. Anyway, some results have just come in. Our leader at the moment is the surfer Garrett McNamara. But the voting hasn't finished yet. So you can still have... Unit 3. Speaking. Exercises 1 and 2. Oh, hey, Neil. Oh, hi, Daisy. I haven't seen you for ages. I know. I've been away. Really? What have you been up to? I've just got back from an adventure holiday in Zambia. Oh, wow. Was it good? It was amazing. <laughs> I've done a lot over the last few weeks. I went kayaking on the Zambezi River and I saw the Victoria Falls. That sounds great. Did you take many photos? Yes, I've already posted hundreds. <laughs> what about you? Have you been doing anything special? Not really. I've been studying every day. We've got exams all week. Oh, good luck with that. Thanks. Bye, Daisy. It was good to see you again. Unit 4. Vocabulary. Exercise 2. Check your eco-intellect. The Earth provides everything we need. But how much do you think about it? Develop your eco-intellect by learning how your actions can affect the world we live in. A. The UK produces more than 100 million tonnes of rubbish every year. On average, each person in the UK throws away their own weight in rubbish every seven weeks. B. Plastic bags damage the environment and kill marine animals. 
They pollute our towns and cities. We use each plastic bag for an average of only 12 minutes. C. Recycling one aluminium can saves enough energy to power a television for three hours. It takes six weeks to recycle your old drink can into parts of a plane, car or a new can. D. We must protect our world. We're running out of natural resources and destroying rainforests. 24 trees make one ton of newspaper. A ton of recycled newspaper saves 17 trees. E. In some parts of the world, people can't afford to buy food. In other parts, people buy more than they need. A typical UK family wastes approximately 700 pounds of food every year. F. Having a shower instead of a bath reduces the amount of water we waste. A toilet made before 1993 uses 60% more water than toilets made since then. Unit 4. Vocabulary. Exercises 3 and 4. 1. Yana. What worries you most about the planet, Yana? I'm worried about the damage we're doing to it. Every day on my way home from work, I see people with bags and bags of stuff. It's important that we realise we shouldn't just buy something and then throw it away when we get bored. We need to stop buying so much. 2. Mitchell Hi Mitchell, are you worried about the planet? Yeah, I am actually, about things like pollution and climate change. We need to start thinking about what causes these things and take action. Also, I think we need to recycle more. 3. Paul What worries you about the planet, Paul? I'm quite concerned about our food, where it comes from and how far it travels to get to us. A lot of healthy food is becoming hard to afford for many families. 4. Will Will, are you worried about the planet? No, I'm not particularly worried. The Earth's been around for a long time, and the weather's always changing, isn't it? That's just the way things are. It's not a big deal. Unit 4. Reading. Exercise 2. The food of the future. Insects. The superfood of the future. There are a lot of hungry people in the world. So how do we deal with it? In the next 30 years, we'll need to provide enough protein for billions more mouths. And with all these extra people, there will be even less space for farming. One solution is for us to eat insects. They are a great source of protein and they don't need as much space or water as farm animals. So why don't we eat insects regularly? The fact is that many people in Asia, Africa and South America already do. The problem is that Europeans and North Americans don't want to. Some governments are now trying to convince them why it is a good idea. The Nordic Food Lab in Copenhagen, for example, developed the Insect Deliciousness Project. Its chefs have been to five continents to discover an incredible world of insect flavour. In Australia, they tasted honey ants. They ate fried caterpillar in Tanzania, and in Mexico, they enjoyed desert ant eggs. Will they and other similar organisations persuade Europeans and Americans to take a bite from a caterpillar or an ant?
What's your view? How many people will eat insects in the future? How much food made with insects will you eat? Unit four, vocabulary and listening, exercise one. Automatic. Digital. Ecological. Electronic. High tech. Homemade. Multifunctional. Natural. Recycled. Second hand. Smart. Solar. Useful. Waterproof. Unit four, vocabulary and listening, exercises three and four. Welcome back to Material World. Now, today we won't be talking about the latest electronic equipment, multifunctional gadgets, smart fabrics, automatic cars, or even solar cars. Instead, we'll be looking at very special ecological shoes. These could help children in the developing world, in addition to helping the environment. Let's find out more with our consumer correspondent Murray Roberts. Hello, Julie. Hello, Murray. Tell us a little about the problem first. Well, it's a sad fact that there are millions of children in the world who don't have shoes, and there are lots of children who do have them but still have problems. That's because the shoes are second-hand and too big or too small for their feet. But you have found a solution, haven't you? Yes, inventor Kenton Lee is the director of a company that produces shoes that can increase or decrease in size. That sounds a bit high tech, doesn't it? How does it work? It's not high tech at all, really. You don't always need digital technology to solve a problem. It works by making simple changes to the shoe. If you change the position of the front and side parts, they will either get bigger or smaller. So children can use them for several years as their feet grow, can't they? Yes, for up to five years. But how's that possible? One shoe won't fit everyone, will it? The shoes have two sizes. Small is for children between five and ten years of age. Large is for older children between ten and fifteen. That's really useful, isn't it? These kids can probably do a lot more in their lives than they could before. Go to school, play, that kind of thing. Yes, exactly. Can the kids use them for running around as well? I mean, are they practical? Yes. Well, they aren't waterproof, but children can use them to walk, run, play, whatever they want. At the moment, people are wearing them in Ecuador, Haiti, Ghana, and Kenya, aren't they? Yes, that's right. And the company is planning to get them to many more countries too. Murray, thank you very much. Now on to our next story about clothes made from recycled and natural materials, which you can find on our website. Unit four, language focus, exercise six. One. The bag wasn't expensive, was it? Two. They can buy them online, can't they? Three. You'll call me, won't you? Unit four. Speaking. Exercises one and two. I'm looking for jewelry for my mum. What do you think of this pendant? It's real gold. Oh, it's nice, but it's quite small. I like the size of it, but it's a bit too expensive. Wow, it's like seventy pounds. I mean, it's not as nice as that silver one. Oh yes, I much prefer that one. It's Mum's style. 
Which one is cheaper? Okay, let's see. Right, the silver one is much less expensive. It's only thirty pounds. Well, get that one then. Progress review two, exercise four. Hi, Oscar. How was school today? Quite good. We were learning about John Goddard. Who? John Goddard, an American adventurer and explorer. When he was fifteen years old, he made a list of a hundred and twenty-seven things he wanted to do in his life. Lots of people do lists like that. I know, but John Goddard was different. He wasn't much older than you are now, and his goals weren't easy. He wanted to climb up the world's highest mountains, kayak down the longest rivers from beginning to end, jump out of a plane with a parachute, and hike across the Grand Canyon. And among all these extreme adventures, he also planned to read the whole Encyclopaedia Britannica or learn to speak three foreign languages. Wow! Did he do it all? He did over a hundred things from the age of fifteen until he died. He inspired many people to be like him, to dream, make lists, and explore the world. Oh, I want to be like John Goddard. I want to sail around the world, cycle around Australia, and dive off beautiful cliffs in Hawaii. Really? <laughs> Wouldn't you be scared? I don't think so. Remember last summer in Spain when we learnt to surf on those huge waves? I wasn't scared at all. <laughs> Maybe a little. <laughs> <laughs> Progress review two, exercise eleven. Welcome to the invention show in Northville Secondary School. Every year, students present products of the future. Get ready to see some multifunctional and useful things. Our first inventor is Felix Gibson. My project is an electronic gadget called Buyer's Choice. It's a high-tech digital solution. For people who buy clothes online, when you shop for clothes online, you never know how they're going to fit. Buyer's Choice are virtual reality glasses which help you see yourself in the new clothes. Sit or walk to check how you look in these clothes when you move. Great idea, Felix. Here's Amy Parker. What have you prepared, Amy? It's a smart present app. Instead of buying a present for someone, you download the app and create a homemade gift using the Smart Present app. How does it work? You take pictures of the unwanted things you have at home, and the app gives you ideas for the recycled presents. When there's something extra you need to buy, the app shows you the nearest second-hand shop. Your present will be unique and personal. I like it. And now over to Jimmy Wilcox. This is a solar phone charger which you attach to your bike. It charges your phone when there's sun. This ecological charger has got an automatic waterproof cover which protects your phone when it rains. It's a simple solution which doesn't harm the natural environment. I love it. Thank you, Jimmy. Unit Five, Vocabulary, Exercise Two. The Generations Quiz. One. Which of these things can children normally do before they're five? A. Get a new hobby. C. Get a bank account. Two. Six to twelve years. Surveys show we are happiest around nine to ten years old. Why? C. It's when we have the most fun and the fewest worries. Three. Most teenagers have got a social media account nowadays.
How old do you usually need to be to get a social media account? A. 13 4. 20 to 29 years When they have got a degree or finished their studies, people in their 20s often get a job. Which of these things can't you do in the UK until you're 21? B. Adopt a child. 5. 30 to 49 years. At this age, many people are married. According to scientists, if you get married, you'll probably... C. Live longer. 6. 50 to 59 years. People often become grandparents at this age. What is the record number of grandchildren to one grandparent in the world? B. 140. 7. 60 to 79 years. When people get a pension, they often lead a quiet life, but not always. In the Senior Olympics event in the USA, for example, older people compete in every Olympic sport. What's the world record for the women's 100 metres for women over 70? B. 14.6 seconds. 8. 70 to 100 years. People are getting older. In 1900, the average life expectancy in Europe was 43. What is it now? A. About 70. Unit 5. Vocabulary. Exercises 3 and 4. 1. Mitchell. Mitchell, what's the best age, do you think? The best age? Um, I think maybe around 21 or 22, because at that age I'll probably have a bit of money and a car. I work hard, so I'm sure I'll get a good job. I'll definitely be living in my own place, that's for sure. 2. Emma What's the best age to get married, Emma? I think the best age to get married is probably around 27, something like that. I doubt that I'll get married, though, because I like being single. You've got the freedom to do what you want to do. 3. Zara What do you want to do when you're older, Zara? I'm pretty sure that I'll go to university and I might study engineering. After that, who knows? Maybe I'll go travelling. 4. Joe Hi, Joe. Do you think that you'll get rich in the future? You never know. I doubt it, though. I don't think I'll be the boss of a company or anything like that. I don't mind if I'm rich or not, as long as I'm happy and healthy, and all my friends and family are too. 5. Paul Would you like to live to be a 100, Paul? Yeah, I would. But I'd like to be healthy and have someone to look after me when I get older. I think in the future most people will live until they're a 100 anyway. Unit 5. Reading. Exercise 2. Faces of the Future Humans have adapted and changed through the ages, and unless a catastrophe destroys the Earth, we'll probably survive and continue to change. Scientists are already saying that children born now might live until they're 150. Further into the future, Perhaps people won't die, but simply buy new body parts as they get older. What other changes are possible in the years ahead? 1. Homo informaticus 
if we continue to use computers and screens more and more, our eyes and brains will probably get bigger in order to process more information. 2. Neo humans. If there's a terrible war or an epidemic, survivors might leave the cities and live in caves. They'll become stronger, hairier, and more agile. 3. Homo perfectus. If scientists manipulate human genes, will some people pay to have children who are better looking, healthier, and more intelligent than normal humans? 4. Cyborgs. Soldiers of the future might be part human, part machine, with super strong body parts, auto zoom eyes, and a brain connected by Wi Fi to supercomputers. Unit 5 Language Focus Exercise 4 I won't get a job unless I study hard. They did not want to go dancing with us. How much cheese should we need? Unit 5. Vocabulary and Listening. Exercise 1. Where do you see yourself in 10 years' time? Declan. I see myself finishing university first. Then I'm going to get a good job, settle down and have a family. <laughs> Can't wait. Early bird. Why do people tie themselves down? Why not take some time out? Go travelling while you're young. D. Lee 33 That's what I think. I don't want a good job. I want to have fun. I'll take up a sport like karate or skydiving and enjoy myself. In two years, I hope that I'll be doing my black belt. And I'll be happy. Early bird. Me too. I'm going to travel around Australia and teach myself to surf. Marcus. Where are you going to earn money to get to Australia? Early bird. I'm going to start up my own business, make a million dollars in two years, and then I'll retire young and travel the world. Why waste time working all your life? Marcus. I think it's important to look after yourself, but what about others? I'd like to get involved with a charity and spend some time abroad helping people. D. Lee 33. I totally agree. Good luck with that, Marcus. Unit 5. Vocabulary and Listening. Exercises 3 and 4. 1. I think people are too serious. Life is about enjoying yourself. I want to get a job in a shop or something. Then I can earn a bit and enjoy myself a lot. I'm really looking forward to doing karate, but I want to try other stuff too. Basketball, football, maybe even extreme sports. 2. I'm definitely going to take some time out before I go to university, and the first place I'd like to go is Africa. There are lots of different charities there, and I want to work with one of them. I think it's important to help others and make a difference. 3. In 10 years' time. Well, I'm not going to study anymore when I've left school. I want to get a job and start earning money straight away. I'm hoping to work for myself. I've been teaching myself computer coding. I've got a couple of really good apps which I think I can make a lot of money with. Just wait and see. 4. I know most boys of my age think I'm strange, but I really like kids. 
I come from a big family, you see, and I'm hoping I'll have a large family of my own one day. I want to get a good education first, that's important. Then I want to work hard with a good company and hopefully settle down. In ten years' time, I'll be happy. I'm feeling pretty optimistic about the future. Unit 5 Speaking Exercises 1 and 2 So, Pamela, you've got a busy day ahead. I know, it's crazy. That's what happens when you're important. Don't forget, you've got a meeting this afternoon with the television executives. They're going to ask you about your new plans for the TV show. Yes, what time does that start? The meeting starts at 12.30 in the city centre, so you have to be there a little earlier. I'll try to book your taxi for 11.45. But I have auditions for the new show today, remember? The auditions start at 10. Yes, I know. We're going to make sure you'll be on time. I hope so. We'll see. Oh, by the way, I'm meeting the director for lunch today at 2pm. What? Why didn't you tell me? I'm telling you now. Can you remind me to tell him about the new plans too? OK, whatever you say. Unit 6. Vocabulary. Exercise 1. Boarding school. School holidays. Home school. School leavers. Mixed school. Primary school. School rules. Secondary school. Single sex school. School uniform. Unit 6. Vocabulary. Exercise 2. Plan your ideal school. What is your ideal school like? Choose from these ideas. 1. Type of school. What kind of school do you decide to enrol yourself in? A. Single sex school. B. Mixed school. C. Boarding school. D. Homeschooling. 2. Subjects. Traditional school subjects are a bit boring, so you want a school where you can take classes in... A. Dance, theatre and singing. B. Skateboarding. C. Graffiti art. D. Sailing. E. Other. Please tell us what. 3. Timetable. What hours do you choose to go to lessons? A. From 8.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. B. From 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. C. From 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. D. A timetable? No thanks. I go to lessons when I feel like it. 4. Study. It's important to do homework. How much would you do at your ideal school? A. Two to three hours a day. B. Four to five hours a week. C. More than ten hours a week. D. Homework is so old-fashioned. We don't have it at my ideal school. 5. 
Rules. What happens if you don't obey rules at your school? A. You get extra homework. B. Nothing. C. You stay at home for a week. D. You spend your lunch time in class. 6. School leavers. You're finally in your last year. The most important thing for you is to A. Pass exams so you can get a qualification and find a job. B. Not fail exams. C. Get good marks and get into college to study for your future career. D. Enjoy your last year with your friends. Unit 6 Vocabulary Exercise 3 1. Emma What kind of school do you think is best for teenagers, Emma? I definitely think that single-sex schools are the best because in the UK, students at single-sex schools usually get better exam results than students at mixed schools. 2. Max Max, does the type of school you attend help you get good results? I'm not sure I agree with that. It all depends on how hard you study, but schools need to be more about helping students to become good people. I feel that's much more important than getting good results and obeying the rules about school uniform. 3. Elizabeth Elizabeth, do you agree that schools need to help students to become good people rather than just help them to do well academically? Yeah, I do. And I think that's a good point. Learning is much more than maths, history and geography and doing your homework. Getting good results shouldn't be the only thing people think about. And if it is, people will cheat. So what kind of school do you want? Well, I think that many head teachers don't really understand what young people today need. I like the idea of homeschooling. And one of the advantages is that you don't get distracted by noisy students. Unit 6. Reading. Exercise 2. Brit School, London. If you study hard and have a passion for performing arts, you won't be able to resist the Brit School. Brit School students can take special classes in technology and performing arts, like dance, singing, music and drama. However, they also do ordinary subjects, such as English, maths, science and foreign languages. After they graduate, Many students will be able to have very successful careers as singers or actors. Young people can join the school from the age of 14. Its unusual curriculum means students do exams and take part in performances and exhibitions. The timetable is challenging. They have to practice at break time and after school, but they can't forget to do their homework on time. River Plate School Buenos Aires, Argentina. This is definitely a school with a difference. The school is located in the stadium of one of South America's most important football teams. River Plate is unique because it's the only sports institution in the world that's got its own kindergarten. With students as young as five years old, school, college and university. If you get good marks at the school, you can get into college or university at the same location. Students can watch football matches and see famous players practice. The school started in 1928 for young football players. But in those days, girls couldn't attend the classes. 
people believed that girls couldn't play football as well as boys. Now the school and its ideas have changed and everyone has the chance to be part of this historic institution. Unit 6. Vocabulary and Listening. Exercise 1. 1. Attend university. College. School. 2. Do a course. An apprenticeship. A degree. 3. Study engineering. Science. Management. 4. Train to be an engineer. A physicist. A lawyer. 5. Get the right qualifications. A job. Good marks. 6. Apply for a job. A course. A position. Unit 6. Vocabulary and Listening. Exercise 2. A. Nursing. B. Science. C. Engineering. D. Teaching. E. Management. F. Construction. G. Entertainment. H. Journalism. I. IT. J. Law. Unit 6. Vocabulary and Listening. Exercises 4 and 5. So, what do you all want to do when you leave school? Aisha, what do you think? My mum and dad want me to do a degree in engineering, but I know I won't get good enough marks in my exams. Also, I feel I need to choose a career that I'll enjoy, like a surfing instructor, for example. That's an interesting idea, Aisha. Would you need to train to do that? Well, you must be a really strong swimmer, as you'll have to spend a long time in the water. I've been swimming for years now, so I don't have to worry about that. But you mustn't think you can do it without training. You have to do a course that teaches you all the emergency procedures. You mustn't surf if you don't know the procedures. It's a dangerous sport. What about you, Mia? Um, I'm not sure what I want to do, to be honest. My parents and teachers are putting a lot of pressure on me to decide. I want to do something that helps others. My friends say I should become a nurse because I like looking after people. I want to do something more exciting, like, well... Train to be a paramedic helicopter pilot. But I must get really good marks, and I need to save a lot of money or get a scholarship before I can apply for a course. I really want to go to university, but university courses are sometimes very expensive. Sounds like a good idea. What about you, Max? Mum says I should become a professional sleeper, so that I don't need to get up early in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. Universities and research centres actually pay people to sleep while they do tests on them. But anyway, I'm really interested in computers, and I saw an advert for an apprenticeship in computing. I think being a video game tester would suit me. I just love playing video games. So why not get paid for doing it? I've got until March to apply for the apprenticeship, so I don't have to make a decision right now. Hmm, I see. Thanks, Max. Unit 6. Language Focus. Exercise 4.
One. You mustn't speak during the exam. Two. Joe should apply for this course. Unit six. Speaking. Exercises one and two. Hi, Neil. Is anything the matter? You look really upset. I'm really concerned about the engineering course I'm doing. It's too difficult, and I'm really not enjoying it. I know I'm not going to pass. Have you spoken to your teachers about it? No, I'm so worried. I haven't told anyone. What would you do if you were me? My advice is to get help now. If you don't, things will only get worse. I don't know what to do. I think an apprenticeship would be better for me, but it's too late now. Don't panic. It's never too late, but you need to speak to someone about it. You're right. I'll go and talk to my teacher now. Thanks, Daisy. No problem. Progress review three, exercise four. Hi, Liam. It's Jasmine. Hi, Jasmine. How are you? I'm great. I'm calling from the airport. Wow. Where are you going? Brazil. My parents have decided to spend the summer holidays abroad. We're going to travel around South America for a few weeks. Amazing. I know. I'm sure we'll have so much fun. What are your plans for the summer? I don't know yet. My dad wants to take some time out in August, but he's really busy at work now doing an important project. Mum says he'll earn a lot of money, so we can have a great holiday soon. That sounds great. I know, but I don't want to waste time before we go anywhere. I definitely don't want to just sit at home and watch TV. You could do some extra homework. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you take up a sport at the local club? They're offering tennis and volleyball. I didn't know about that. I've always wanted to learn to play tennis. Great idea. Thanks. No problem. I'll speak to you when I get back from Brazil. Sure. Enjoy yourself in Brazil. Send me some photos. I will. Take care. Bye. Progress review three, exercise eleven. Joshua, what do you want to do when you finish school? I don't really know. That's okay. It's my job as a careers advisor to help you think about the options. Can you tell me about your family? What do they do? My dad is an engineer. He works in a construction company. They build new roads. My mum studied nursing, and she works in a hospital. I've got an older sister, Sophie. She's at university in London, and she's applying for jobs with some big law companies. I'm not really interested in any of those things, though. Well, what do you like doing in your free time? I usually hang out with my friends, play video games, go to the cinema, or listen to music. Are you good at singing or acting? You could have a career in entertainment. <laughs> no, it's not for me. <laughs> How about journalism? You could write film or game reviews. I'm not into writing. I prefer maths and science. How about doing a course in computing? There are lots of options there for students who are good at maths and science. It's great, but my uncle studied IT, and he ended up teaching IT in an elementary school. I don't want that. I'm sure you can get a job in an IT company if you get the right qualifications. Will I be earning a lot of money? <laughs> It depends. Some IT work is very well paid, even more than jobs in law. That sounds great. Thank you for your help. Unit seven, vocabulary exercise one. Campaign. A campaign. Donate. A donation. 
Volunteer. A volunteer. Sign. A signature. Ban. A ban. Believe. A belief. Boycott. A boycott. Protest. A protest. Aim. An aim. Propose. A proposal. End. An end. Support. A supporter. Unit seven. Vocabulary. Exercises four and five. One. Yana. Hi, Yana. Can you tell me what petition you've just signed? Sure. It's an anti-bullying petition. I think people should support victims more and campaign for change on social media. Two. Zara. Was that a petition you just signed, Zara? Yeah, it was to end shark fishing. Disgusting. I hope they introduce a law against it soon. Three. Will. Will, what's the petition for? It's to try to persuade the local council to use empty houses and let homeless people live in them. I think it's the best thing to do. Four. Mitchell. Mitchell, can I just ask you what the petition you signed was for? Oh yeah, it was to propose a new law for the government to let people vote from sixteen on. I'd like people my age to be able to vote. After all, it's our future. Unit seven, reading, exercises two and three. Changing the world with kindness. Sometimes a spontaneous act of kindness can change another person's life. Read about these incredible people and their actions that help to make the world a better place for someone else. In Britain, life can't be easy for musician Daniel Black. After a cycling accident in 2009, the doctors told him that he couldn't walk or play the guitar. He had saved. Twenty-two thousand pounds for his intended expensive surgery, when he heard about a young boy who also needed surgery to allow him to walk. Daniel told the boy's family that he would donate all his money to the boy's surgery. The little boy was then able to walk again. In Vietnam, in March 2020, Hoang Thuan An. A Vietnamese entrepreneur in Ho Chi Minh City invented a 24/7 automatic dispensing machine, providing free rice for the poor during the COVID-19 lockdown. The machine distributed a 1.5 kilogram, 3.3 pound bagful of rice from a small silo. The team said that people in need still had access to food and resources during the pandemic. In the U.S. Glenn James, an unemployed and homeless office worker, did something both honest and kind. The police said that he decided to return a bag with forty-two thousand dollars in it to the owner. A man called Ethan Whittington read about Glenn and started a campaign to collect money for him. Ethan said that an amazing one hundred and sixty thousand dollars was raised, and Glenn's life hasn't been the same since. These stories may persuade you that when you spread a little kindness, there may not be a personal benefit, but you could encourage people to be kind to you too. Unit seven: Vocabulary and Listening, Exercise One. One. Thoughtful. Two. Confident. Three. Sympathetic. Four. Heroic. 
Five. Organized. Six. Generous. Seven. Patient. Eight. Honest. Unit seven. Vocabulary and listening. Exercises three, four, and five. Now let's move on to our topic about change makers. Scarlett, which real hero did you choose to research? I chose a man called Robert Lee. He's such a clever and thoughtful person. He had a great idea to donate unwanted food from New York restaurants to homeless people. He found organized and honest volunteers to collect and deliver the food. It's a simple idea, but one that helps people in need, and it also stops restaurants from wasting food. I really admire him. If more people were like Robert, the world would be a better place. That's lovely, Lena. Which real hero do you admire? My hero is Edwin Sabuhoro from Rwanda. He started working to protect mountain gorillas. He's brave. And heroic, he helped to catch people selling baby gorillas and put them in prison. But he is also very fair and sympathetic. He saw that if those people had jobs, they wouldn't need to sell baby gorillas. He did something incredibly generous. He gave them all his money so they could start farming. Now he has an eco tour company. Which gives work to people and protects the wildlife. Wow! Anyone else? Um, Asim. If I had to choose just one person, it'd be a grandmother called Marilyn Price. She's a kind and patient woman who works with city children and takes them on bike trips to the countryside. This gives the children an opportunity to see different places, make new friends. And become healthier and more confident. She also organizes programs, teaching children how to make and fix bikes. There are programs in the USA, Canada, Israel, and Africa. Thanks, everyone. Those are some great change makers. If I were you, I'd start thinking of other ideas to make the world a better place. Unit Seven, Vocabulary and Listening, Exercise Six. Now, change, chose, kind, wildlife, wasting, mountain, homeless. Unit Seven, Language Focus, Exercise Four. If I ruled the world, what changes would you make if you ruled the world? Here's what some people said: If I were a member of the government, I would support the poor. I would stop bullying in schools if I had the power. If I were president of the world, I would stop teachers giving homework. I would allow young people to vote if I could make changes. If it were up to me, I would introduce taxes on junk food. Unit Seven, Speaking, Exercises One and Two. Hi there. Would you mind helping me with a survey?、Oh, what's it about? It's about what types of recycling people do every day. We believe we must recycle our rubbish, and we want the government to make it necessary everywhere. But don't people already recycle? Unfortunately, not everyone does, as people can choose not to recycle. If the government made it necessary, this would lead to everyone recycling their rubbish. But won't this perhaps be too difficult to organise? 
The main reason for recycling is to save the planet. It might need a lot of work, but it's definitely worth the effort. I suppose you're right. OK, I'll answer your questions. Unit 8. Vocabulary. Exercise 1. Films. Action. Animation. Musical. Books. Graphic novel. Manga. Mystery. Books and films. Adventure. Comedy. Crime. Drama. Fantasy. Horror. Romance. Science fiction. Thriller. Unit 8. Vocabulary. Exercise 4. 1. Will. Will, what's your favourite book? The Girl on the Train's the best book I've read in a long time. It's about a missing woman. It's a crime novel and it's very exciting. The author's Paula Hawkins. 2. Emma. Emma, what's your favourite book? I absolutely love the Divergent trilogy. It's basically a science fiction story about a society where young people are separated into different groups at the age of 16. The films are really good, but they're not quite as good as the books. 3. Elizabeth What's your favourite book, Elizabeth? My favourite's Manga Man by Barry Liger. It's a science fiction graphic novel, but it's also a romance. It's really original and entertaining. I've never read anything quite like it. 4. Alicia Alicia, what's your favourite book? The novel I've just finished reading's about a young woman who has to manage the family business when her parents die. She has a lot of problems with the people who work for her and almost loses the business as a result. In the end, she wins everyone's respect when she manages to save the company. Unit 8. Reading. Exercise 2. Film records. The record books are full of great film trivia, but only gossip about stars is usually heard. I like the gossip, but what about the film trivia we aren't told about? Some film records are much more interesting. For example, did you know that Robert Downey Jr. was paid more than any other actor for his role as Iron Man in the Avengers films. The huge sum of 80 million US dollars. And I bet you can't guess which film has the record for the most tickets sold. I was amazed. Well, apparently more cinema tickets were sold for Gone with the Wind, a 1930s romance, than for any other film. I haven't even seen it, but it sounds terrible. The classic science fiction film Star Wars comes a close second, and I'm sure that it's a much better movie. One truly unbelievable film record was set by a man called Arshi Sharma in Mathura, India in 2008. He sat in a cinema and watched films for an incredible 120 hours and 23 minutes. That's 48 films in total. Another film-related record from India is about the world's largest film poster. It was made to advertise India's biggest action film of 2015, Bahu Bailey. The size of it is extraordinary. At nearly 5,000 square metres, it's more than half the size of a professional football pitch.
It wasn't made in the usual way. It was designed by the film's director, S.S. Rajamuli, and it was made by a team of 30 people who worked around the clock for three days. Unit 8. Vocabulary and Listening. Exercise 1. Director. Direct. Award. Award. Writer. Write. Actor. Act. Star. Star. Nomination. Nominate. Unit 8. Vocabulary and Listening. Exercises 3 and 4. And welcome to another edition of Cleverboard. Tonight's contestants are 16-year-old Jasmine. Hi! 15-year-old Max. Hello there. And 15-year-old Bobby. So you all know the rules. There are 10 points for each correct answer. The first one to hit the button answers the question. A wrong answer means another contestant gets the chance to answer for 5 points. Everyone ready? Yes! Question 1. Which film was director James Cameron given an Oscar for? It was Titanic. It was Titanic, which was awarded a total of 11 Oscars. So that's 10 points to Max. Question 2. Who was the graphic novel series The Dark Knight written by? Oh... I know this one. I can't remember his name, though. Jasmine? Bobby? Any idea who wrote the first graphic novel in the Dark Knight series, which was published in 1987? I think it was... Frank Miller. Correct. Five points to Bobby. Question three. Please look at the photo on the screen. The spy James Bond was played by which actor in this film? Daniel Craig. Ten points to Jasmine. So, we've got Bobby with five points. Max and Jasmine are both in first position with ten points. Here is our fourth and final question. It all depends on this one. Bradley Cooper, Robert Downey Jr. and Jennifer Lawrence are all big Hollywood stars and they all received Oscar nominations. Which one of them has actually won an Oscar? Robert Downey Jr. Ooh, wrong answer. Robert Downey Jr. has received two nominations, but he hasn't won yet. For five points... Max? Jasmine? Is it Jennifer Lawrence? Correct, Jasmine. Jennifer Lawrence has been nominated four times and Bradley Cooper has been nominated nine times. But she's the only one of the three who has won. And we have a winner. Unit 8. Vocabulary and Listening. Exercise 5. 1. Manga. 2. Guess. 3. Original. 4. Game. 5. Largest. 6. Gossip. 7. Intelligence. 8. Generosity. Unit 8. Speaking. Exercises 1 and 2. Hi, Sammy. Hi, Daisy. How about going to the cinema tonight? All right. What about Extreme Escape? It stars Jack Houston. I'm a big fan of his. Mm, I don't fancy an adventure film. I'd rather see a science fiction film. Well, you might prefer Beyond Mars. I saw that last week. 
I'd prefer to see something I haven't seen. I fancy Caro's Two Dreams. It's a fantasy. I'm not really into that kind of thing, but it's had great reviews. I'd prefer that to Extreme Escape. Progress Review 4. Exercise 4. How was your day at school? It was good, thanks, Grandma. We had an interesting psychology test during our PSHE class. The teacher gave us ten minutes and asked us to write as many adjectives as possible to describe our positive qualities. We couldn't write what other people think about us. It should be how we see ourselves. How did it go? Most of my friends wrote about twelve things, but I had only five qualities on my list. I couldn't think of anything else. No, oh, I'm sure you have more than five positive qualities. What was on your list? Sympathetic, honest, thoughtful, generous and patient. I agree. You always think about others first. Hmm, what else? You're organised. You plan all your studies and extra activities. Only because Mum and Dad ask me to. You're very clever. I'm not. Think about Ruby in my class. She's clever. Honey, she might be clever, but so are you. You're also brave, aren't you? Remember when you saved your brother from that angry dog last year? Maybe. But I could never be as heroic as Katniss Everdeen in Hunger Games. <laughs> Katniss is an extreme example, Molly. You're also kind to other people and fair. You always treat everyone equally. Not always, but I do try. Molly, there is one thing I'm sure you're not. What? Confident. You are such a great girl, and you don't believe in yourself. Progress Review 4. Exercise 11. Good morning, class. Today, we're continuing our lesson about your favourite films. What genres of films do you usually watch, and why? Um, Ben. I love science fiction films. It's a very popular genre now. I read a lot of science fiction books too. I prefer the ones which were written a while ago, like Orson Scott Card's Ender's Game. It's interesting to think what the world might be like in the future. I especially enjoy watching films which were adapted from a book. It's fun to compare how I saw the story differently from the director. Sometimes I'm disappointed, but usually I love the director's vision. I hadn't thought of it like that before. Would you rather choose a film because the director is good or because the actors are stars? Um, Katie, what do you think makes a great film? It's hard to say. I think good actors and directors help films to be great. But I don't like it when the same actors appear in almost every film. They become really famous when they're the winner of an important award or when they receive an Oscar nomination. Then they're everywhere. It might stop other actors from becoming stars. Hmm. Does anyone agree with Katie? Um, Tom? I do. Hollywood stars are sometimes too much. I love watching foreign films because the actors seem to be less perfect and not like supermodels. They seem more real. That's an interesting view. What other types of films would you like to see more of? Culture 1. Exercise 2. Hair through the decades. Like fashion trends, hairstyles come and go. Here's a look at hair crazes over the past 30 years. 1990s. The Rachel. This hairstyle was named after Rachel Green, a character from the 1990s American sitcom Friends. 
The actress, Jennifer Aniston, who played Rachel in the show, used to have medium-length hair that was cut in layers at the bottom. 2000s Extensions The craze for very long, straight hair in the first decade of the 21st century made hair extensions extremely popular. 2010s Grey hair this decade introduced a strange new fashion of young women with grey hair. Not natural grey hair, but a dye to change the colour to silver grey. The beard and the moustache. OK, so they're not really hairstyles, but the long beard and curly moustache will be remembered as the look of the 2010s. They were so popular that images of moustaches even decorated blouses, hats and all sorts of clothes. CLIL2 Exercise 3 The Colour Wheel Have you ever thought about how colours are related? Why do some colour combinations look good and others don't? According to Isaac Newton, white light consists of all the colours of the rainbow. Newton then arranged them in a circle of warm and cool categories. Red, blue and yellow are the three primary colours on the colour wheel. By mixing two primary colours, we've got the secondary colours green, orange and purple. Colours can also be harmonious or complementary. Complementary colours are directly opposite each other, like red and green. Harmonious colours sit next to each other on the wheel. Famous artists and decorators have used the colour wheel to choose the right colours ever since then. Everyone agrees that colours can affect our feelings. A vibrant red, for example, is often associated with anger or danger while yellow is a happy colour. Blue can make people feel calm. Pastel pink, which is a gentle pink, sometimes makes them think of romance. And green is the colour of nature. What's your favourite colour? What do you associate it with? CLIL3 Exercise 4 The Water Cycle Now here is a challenge for you. Go and get a glass of water and take a look at it. Can you guess how old it is? Well, your water perhaps fell from a cloud just a couple of weeks ago, but it has been around for the same length of time as planet Earth. That means that your glass of water was around when the first creatures swam in the sea and when the dinosaurs roamed the Earth. But how is this possible? The fact is that the quantity of water on the Earth remains the same over time and it constantly goes through the water cycle. In the cycle, there is continuous movement of water on, above and below the surface of the Earth. Firstly, the sun heats the water in the rivers, seas and oceans and it evaporates into the air. Plants and trees lose water too, and this also goes up into the air. The water vapour then cools and condenses into small drops, which form clouds. You can see how condensation happens if you look again at your glass of water on a hot day. After a short time, water from the air condenses onto the cold glass. Back to the sky though. And the next step is that the clouds gradually get heavier and heavier until they can't hold the water any more, and it falls to earth as rain, sleet or snow. Water can change state from liquid to vapour to solid during the cycle, but any form of water that falls from the clouds is called precipitation. When on Earth, some of the water runs into rivers, lakes and streams and becomes surface water. 
some enters the ground and forms underground rivers or lakes, before eventually flowing back to the seas and oceans. The cycle is complete. CL IL four exercise three. Make bananas fair. Bananas are the most popular fruit in the world. British people love eating bananas, but they don't grow in the UK and have to be transported. So, how is it possible that a banana only costs eleven pence in the supermarkets? The reason is that the farmers often get very little because the companies who buy bananas want to make big profits. Life isn't easy on a banana plantation. The farmers work long hours and can get harmed by dangerous pesticides. Fair trade is an international movement that tries to help farmers and workers in developing countries. Fair trade products include items like bananas, coffee, sugar, coca, and rice. When you buy a product with fair trade label, you know the farmers received a fair price and worked in good conditions. Foncho, a fair trade banana farmer in Colombia, who belongs to a farmers cooperative. We experienced very difficult times when we weren't in fair trade. He says, today, as a fair trade farmer, he gets a minimum price for his bananas, and his cooperative also gets the fair trade premium. This means he can build his family a house and support them. Therefore, next time you are shopping in the supermarket, look for the fair trade label. If enough people choose to buy fair trade goods, more companies will pay the farmers a fair price. C L I L five exercise two. The fish tomato and other GM foods. Did you know that scientists have put a fish gene into a tomato? They did it to develop tomatoes which can grow in cold temperatures. So what are genes? Genes are instructions which exist inside every cell of every living thing. Each cell in the human body contains about twenty-five thousand. To thirty-five thousand genes, which determine your eye color, how tall you are, what skills you have, and so on. So, if you alter a plant gene, you can change a specific characteristic, like color, shape, or height. Genetic engineering changes the genes of plants or animals to make genetically modified organisms. GMOs. Scientists believe that GMOs can help us in many ways. For example, GM crops can produce more food, which contains more nutrients. They can also have an engineered resistance to insects and diseases, and stay fresh for longer. GMOs can make fish grow larger. And make cows produce healthier milk. Some people think that if we want to feed the world's population, we will need GMOs. But does genetic engineering work? Farmers use herbicides to kill weeds, but these chemicals can also damage crops. In the USA, farmers use GM crops which resist herbicides. So that they can destroy weeds without damaging the crop. However, some super weeds are becoming immune to the herbicides, so the farmers have to use more and more chemicals. Food is very important to all of us, and many people believe we are what we eat. These people are worried about the overuse of chemicals. And the possible effects of eating GMOs. Some governments oppose them. What do you think? Culture six, exercise two. The world of work experience. Forget relaxing with friends. 
The end of the school year is a time for working for most 14 and 15 year olds in the UK. Around half a million teenagers in the UK do work experience every summer. This is a useful way to find out which jobs you might enjoy in the future. It is also important when you apply for university or get a job in the future. For example, if you want to study to be an engineer, you could do work experience with a car manufacturer. Other popular work experience placements are in teaching, marketing, media and finance. Placements usually last two weeks. Some teenagers have no idea what job they want to do. In this case, they need to think about their passions. For example, if you are interested in music, you could work in a music shop. Alternatively, if you love animals, you could work on a farm. My work experience. Hi, I'm Paul and I've just done two weeks' work experience on a farm near where I live. It was brilliant. I enjoyed giving the animals their food in the morning. I also made sure the animals had exercise and I kept everything clean. At night, I helped to put the animals inside. It was hard work, but I loved it. I hope the farm will give me a job when I finish school. Culture 7. Exercise 2. Hideaway Youth Project. Helping young people to make a difference. Aims. Hideaway tries to support young people aged 11 to 25 in Mossside, Manchester. The organisation aims to give young people a way of expressing their opinions and making positive contributions to society. History. In the 1960s, the city of Manchester had problems with crime, violence and unemployment. The founders of the Hideaway Youth Project wanted to provide a safe place, a hideaway for young people in the Mossside area in particular. Since opening in 1965, the project has helped thousands of teenagers of different cultures, religions and races. They can share their stories and get advice as well as take part in activities that develop skills. Many of these teenagers then go on to become project volunteers themselves. Activities. Programs include powerhouse, fun sports activities such as football and basketball or specialist sessions on cooking and art, healthy living. Young people learn about how important it is to eat well and do regular exercise. Young Men's Project and Young Women's Project. These two separate projects support and encourage young men and women to talk about sensitive topics openly and honestly. The sessions promote acceptance and tolerance and build self-confidence. Award Winners. In 2014, the Hideaway Youth Project won the Youth Work Award for their success in helping young people be the best that they can be. Culture 8, Exercise 3 Let's celebrate books. Do you want to meet other people who just love a good story? Then check out these perfect events for all bookworms. International Agatha Christie Festival Agatha Christie, the famous mystery writer, is the best-selling novelist of all time. Her books, translated into over 100 languages, are read and loved by people all over the world. Since 2004, fans of Agatha Christie have been meeting every year at the festival. Where? Tor Abbey. Torquay in Devon. When? September. Usually the 11th to the 20th. What? Listen to talks on Agatha Christie's books, watch theatre groups perform her plays, take part in writing and drama workshops, go to murder mystery parties, 
and taste food that appears in Agatha Christie's books. Gwian Van Bin Book Street Launched on January the 9th, 2016, Gwian Van Bin Book Street received 1.5 million visitors and sold more than 500,000 copies of books in the first year. It provides a location for businesses in the publishing sector to organise events and present products and a cultural space for book enthusiasts. The pedestrian-only street includes more than 20 bookstalls, featuring books and magazines from domestic and foreign publishers. Where? Guyen Van Bin Street, District 1, Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. When? 8am to 10pm daily. What? Listen to famous writers talk about their bestsellers. Take part in writing workshops and talk shows. Attend book signings and book releases. And choose from thousands of titles in the Festival Bookshop.